Plane crashes, desert island. You wake up, yeah. but somebody else, the only other survivor, woke up before you. And yeah. they have collected all the coconuts, the only sure. food sources on the island. They have them. Right. They're theirs now. And they say they'll provide you coconuts so long as you suck. Zero percent of you are subscribed. Fix that. Well, let's have more trade, though. I mean, that's good. Wait, right? Selective, How can you hold selective, both of those opinions at the same time? Easily. Selective protectionist policies for developing countries can be very beneficial. We know this because of the Asian tigers. We know this from countries all around the world. Even America during the Gilded Age engaged in some pretty substantial protectionist policies, which can be effective. Now, America currently is the leader of global trade. I don't think we're in a position to meaningfully benefit from protectionist policies. Mm -hmm. But if there are small yeah. countries like, for example, Bolivia, which just returned its IMF loan, who say, sure. no, we do not want to engage in these reforms. We do not want to submit ourselves to the business interests of the Western world. We will find the way to develop our economy on our own. There are countries yeah. that are better uh, say, for that strategy. Sure. Yeah, I, and I mean, I guess to the extent that you think countries should be free to refuse IMF loans, I mean, sure, well, they should, should be free hope. to refuse IMF loans, yeah. as they always have been, right? That's never been, like, there are conditions countries may find themselves in where an IMF loan is a lot better than the alternative, but but the IMF loan is... This is what I mean about loans. coercion, though, Bastiat. Yeah, if a country and, and is, if a country is desperately poor... Because of Your war and civil argument, conflict, right? and then the IMF yeah. shows up and they're like, we'll give you $100 million yeah. as long as you yeah. neoliberalize your economy. This is a coercive right. engagement, yeah. is it not? Well, for you to define that as coercion, to say that somebody shows up with a $100 million loan, no force re required to, to force that loan on you. They this is offer a libertarian you the option argument. in exchange for reform. It is not a libertarian argument. Bosh, your definition of coercion basically means that nobody can ever engage in any kind of independent agency of any kind so long as scarcity exists in some form. I mean, it's a ridiculous scarcity notion to call will it coercion. Always, scarcity it will, will always, always compel exist. some degree of coercion. There's no denying that there's always going to be some element Gosh. of that. But if you don't believe there's any fundamentally coercive element to like war-torn, poor, ravaged countries with desperate yeah. populations being offered loans as long as they're right. willing to succumb to Western business interests, if you don't think that's an right. interaction which has okay. some degree of, of coercion, of implicit force behind it, then I don't know what you're even talking about. Yeah. We can talk about it, the coconut on yeah. the island analogy if you really yeah, want to, but this coconut, is ridiculous. Yeah, we can talk about the coconut on the island analogy if sure, you well, want oh, to. Well, then I'll ask you. We, we don't even have to talk about that analogy. No, I don't think that's really an analogy that ends very well for anybody who's ever heard of it before and had a minute to think about it. I mean, the idea really? that that proves something, the idea that two people on a desert island arguing over a stack of fruit proves something meaningful about the global economy is ridiculous. The only reason that analogy worked is because you talk to a lot of and caps who are, frankly, ridiculous. I right? don't know. Where These the, arguments you're making sound ridiculous. fairly ridiculous but well, we can run we can run by it. wait then then yeah. overcome the analogy yeah. so if you're saying what you're saying is that fundamentally it is coercion anytime somebody has resources somebody else wants those resources and they cannot get those resources easily except if they go through another person it's like saying basically it's like if i told you Vosh, you know you see your idea of economic democracy is all well and good but you know if we crash on a desert island and three of us decide to form a coconut co-op and you know two of us say you Would ain't you gonna like get, to get that to the analogy yet? person you ain't gonna get that third coconut yeah i mean you get where i'm going here it's ridiculous i, I mean, don't think that the analogy that you're i don't think your deconstruction of my example scale, is very uh, prescient. So hold on. All right, go um, for it. Right. You fly a plane, plane, cr well, you're not flying. Plane crashes, desert island. You wake up, yeah. but somebody else, the only other survivor, woke up before you. And yeah. they have collected all the coconuts, the only sure. food sources on the island. They have them, right. they're theirs now. And they say they'll provide you coconuts so long as you suck their dick. Now, the only yeah. question <laughs> is do you consider this a coercive exchange? Yeah. No. It's no more, no, it's not. Really? The fact that resources are limited, the fact that resources are limited, that somebody else got those resources first and doesn't want to give them to you does not mean they are coercing oh, you by saying, then, then I'll I'd give like... those resources to you in exchange for that. Any more than, by the way, any more than it's a legitimate example to say that three people crash on the island, two of them decide that the worker coconut co-op that they are going to form, now that they've got three people, We're only will talking only about share coercion. the coconuts if they, yeah, that's the thing, right? There's no coercion in the situation for right. one. So wait, right? what does coercion mean to you? Example. Wait, 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 wait. What does coercion mean to you? Coercion is when you use force to deprive someone of something, right? To force them to do something. Not when you what, dangle wait, something I'm sorry. and say, I'm sorry. That means, what about yeah. teachers having sex with their students, Bastia? Yeah, that's rape. 
That's wrong. Wait, 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 wait. Boss yet, hold on. You're unironically like being loud and angry. So let's talk about yeah. it, okay? So a, t a kid has a certain grade, not kid, let's say college, okay? Let's yeah. say a college student has a certain grade and the teacher kind of suggests, you know, that if they stay after class and make some amends that maybe the grade will go up, but they don't demand anything. They don't pull out a gun. They don't threaten anything. Is that not coercion in a comparable way? Well, I would say yeah. it's coercion yeah. because the teacher yeah. has an undue amount of power over the student that they can use used to press the student into a disadvantageous exchange even if the student believe it's something that they want to do it doesn't change the fact that the teacher is wielding power in an undue way and power is something that all of us wield every day in all kinds of different forms and when you say that it's coercion do you think first that's of all, wrong what you've described, first of all what you've described no i don't think it's inherently wrong i don't think it's inherently wrong for somebody who has more resources to offer to share those resources with somebody in exchange for some kind of benefit that's what you're basically degree or that's what you're basically so you, you're coercion. okay with teachers no vosh i'm not okay with that no and again, but that's the what the question you, was the you have to retreat no I, the fact it's that not you have retreating to retreat these you examples, right? If you don't saying, believe in well, coercion as a concept. Okay, well, just to be, no, I don't, Bosch. I've described what coercion is to you, and you were describing something very different. But let me lay out a response to what you're saying, right? Trading grades for sex, right? That's mm -hmm. basically between two otherwise adults, mm -hmm. right? They're adults in this situation. Yeah, I, I, again, if you're trading sex for money, if you're trading sex for, uh, you know, something else that is legal or, or reasonable, you know, again, all other factors out of the mind, no. I don't find that coercion Wait, to then offer why do you that, keep right? saying you do find it coercive, but then you explain it, and then yeah. you say you don't find it coercive? Right, right. Because what you originally described, a teacher having sex with their student, you know, to me, that sounds inherently like rape because I'm thinking of it like an elementary, no, you know, okay, wait, so wait, with school, college, you know. so you think it's okay if okay. it's college? No, it's not okay for a variety of reasons, but it's not like coercion. Wait, I don't then, agree with wait that. if it's not there coercion, then what about it is wrong? We don't, want, we don't want an academic system that, you know, is, is you know, that where grades mean nothing. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Teachers will offer extra credit all the time. Like, uh, yeah. you can, that, if you yeah, talk to the teacher, you can coercion? read the, quests, the tests that you yeah. flunked on. Like, right. there are ways to get around that. So why is the sex element wrong, if not coercion? You, no, they, they, what do you it think? Would be, uh, wait, I'm sorry. Wait, wait. I'm sorry. I'm letting you dictate the conversation a little bit too much. Hold on. Pass you just a moment. Very kindly. You dictated the conversation by bringing up Coconut Island and sex and rape while we were talking about the more salient. No, point wait, the problem, Bastion, is you legitimately you don't understand what coercion here. means. No. Bosh, you've got a very different idea of what coercion is that basically means that all human exchanges, right, are fundamentally coercive. And it doesn't make sense it doesn't make sense there is an in element of coercion in most okay. human interactions but some yeah. are worse than others yeah this is yeah. absolute this is our okay, understanding yeah, of coercion I, with regard to yeah. a wide variety of social issues yeah. it's yeah. not Power hold, wait, wait, hold on it's not surprising sure. to me that you would be attached to capitalism as a system if you're incapable of recognizing that there's something fundamentally yeah. unfair about exchanges right. of resources where sure. only one party in that yeah. exchange is wait really quick why do you keep interrupting me with yeah and sure Bosh, because what you are saying here right now is again another ridiculous kind of attack. Where you talking saying, about the I definition of coercion? I understand why you're okay with coercion, or I understand why you're okay with capitalism, but you can't even understand. I need you to your calm down a little bit, Bastiat, okay? Because and you're Bosh, actually like chirping right. every moment that I speak. No, it's, it's actually it's, it's, it's really right. distracting. Hold what on. What you're doing here so wait, is so, so to you, unfair. coercion begins and yeah. well, I've had this conversation a lot, and usually sure. even ANCAPs don't bite the bullet on the idea that there's no such thing as coercion right. without right. direct force. So you Can actually you define coercion then? Yeah, I think that coercion is well, you have explicit and implicit coercion. And explicit coercion, I think, would be like bullet to the head, like gun to the head, like you know, very yeah. obvious. But implicit coercion is when there is a power balance or a power imbalance, I'm sorry, between two or more entities which means that there's not really a way to fairly dictate the terms of an engagement between them. An example of this would be unionization. The reason we have unions is because collective bargaining is the only way that workers can actually like yeah. barter for their salaries up next to a corporation. People, boomers, mind, have been saying for decades, you need to go in there, you need to tell them what you're worth, okay? Tell them what you want to be paid. This doesn't work. Unions work because through collective bargaining, you're able to bolster yourself. You're able to make yourself stronger. And that's the way mm -hmm. you make that interaction more fair. Sure. Only through unions can we even arrive at what a capitalist would consider a fair wage for a worker. Because otherwise, if corporations had all the whim, then they would just take the governments and take the entire economy and pay everyone exactly what they needed to not starve. It's only through power on the end of the workers that we can arrive at a fair fair, yeah. even by a capitalist standard, 
end. Yeah. So with all of that being said, how can right. you not see, even if you believe that ultimately they do good, which you can bite the bullet sure. on that too, how can you not see that the IMF and the World Bank have a coercive relationship with the developing countries they offer loans right. to? People getting their dicks sucked. We're going to move 